Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Nadine Moscovich. I'm the executive director of Rise Together, and we're super excited to be bringing back to you the Rise Resilient series. This is an educational series that we're gonna be bringing to you by dropping some truths, some knowledge bombs. Knowledge bombs. We're gonna be sharing some tips and some tricks, no, not tricks, <laughs> tools, around how we can better support young people that are affected by addiction and mental health. For us, we have these conversations often from stage, and so we thought it'd be really important to bring some of these topics of conversation right here to you. That's right, so speaking about topics of conversation, and this week we're getting into unmasking the myths, let's keep it real, and we're gonna break down some conversations around both substance use and mental health today. But before we even get into that, uh, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Anthony Alvarado. I'm the board chair of Rise Together and one of the founders, which we started 10 years ago. Ooh. Unbelievable. <laughs> so we're on a 10 year anniversary tour this year. It's a We Are Not Alone tour with our partners over at Safe Project. And I'm just really pumped to be here to be part of this resilience series this year. Awesome. Yeah, we're really excited. And the first conversation that we're bringing to you this week, like Anthony said, we're debunking the myths. Mm -hmm. And the first topic that we want to raise awareness around is that people often think that addiction is a choice. Yeah. Oof, that <laughs> yeah. is some of the hardest words I often hear as a person in long-term recovery. Mm -hmm. um, not gonna lie, you know, we know that addiction mm -hmm. is not a choice. And it is often under, uh, misunderstood mm -hmm. that most people choose to maybe use substances, but it is not a choice when it turns into, you know, a. a disorder uh, or you know abuse on those substances that's right so I'm gonna dive into that a little bit more often we share from stage that addiction is not a choice it's one of the things that I like to focus in on because ultimately at the end of the day it's really important to understand that addiction is actually a disease there's a lot of different factors that impact individuals that struggle with substance use disorder or a long-term addiction like I did I'm a person in long-term recovery and I have been over the last 15 years since I first walked into the door learning this at those first steps is really essential. You know, genetics can impact it, there can be environmental factors, and there also can be a number of other mental health factors that should lead into, you know, struggling with addiction. For somebody like myself, who struggled with anxiousness and depressive moments in my life, there was moments of my life where I also coped with substances, getting through those hard mental health challenges. Yeah, same. I mean, when we talk about unmasking the truth um, around these subjects uh, or debunking the myth, mm -hmm. really for me, I had to take the mask off to really show my true self because for mm -hmm. me, I hid behind the mask of substances for a really long time, thinking that, you know, using and abusing substances was going to, you know, allow me to stay hidden behind the mask and pretend to be somebody that I wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's such an important conversation also, uh, which Anthony mentioned mental health, which is great leading up into our mm -hmm. second myth that we want to debunk during this conversation today is that the second myth is that most people believe that those who struggle with a mental health disorder uh, are often seen as weak or uh, even dangerous. Yeah, that's right. And you know, ultimately at the end of the day, uh, we all have mental health and it's important that we take care of the biggest muscle in our body and that's our biggest, brains right? it's one yeah. of the biggest so yeah. you know at the end of the day you know this is like a computer network and if we don't take care of it you know it can get jammed up and so it's ultimately at the end of the day it's not um you know somebody like myself who struggles with mental health you know to be seen as dangerous or weak that's really completely uh, not the case in this no, situation. not at all and in fact uh, we believe that people who seek support or seek help mm -hmm. uh, for those that are struggling with their mental health that's seen mm -hmm. as a strength that is so brave to be vulnerable and to talk about the things that we struggle with mm -hmm. right I mean more than likely especially since 2020 I know that majority of people are struggling with their mental health mm -hmm. due to loneliness and isolation and disconnection oh, yeah. and Absolutely. so we really hope that by bringing this conversation to you guys debunking the myth around you know addiction and mm -hmm. mental illness we know that these are really crucial conversations and something that means so much to me mm -hmm. as a person in long-term recovery um, and so leading up to the end of the segment I just wanted to leave you with a few tips uh, mm -hmm. as somebody in recovery and, and you can do the same but yeah, um, one of the first things that I just want to share that if you are someone or you know someone uh, the best thing that you can do is reach out for help yeah, that if you absolutely. are someone that knows someone that's struggling with a substance use or mental health disorder know 
it is not a choice. It mm -hmm. is a disease. It is a disorder. And it mm -hmm. is something that people struggle with, whether it's a family member, a friend, a neighbor, mm -hmm. even a coworker. Uh, so just know that it's okay to ask for help. And in fact, there's no shame in asking That's or right. receiving help. That's right. And we've been having students, you know, sign, uh, shine a, a light on the no shame pledge. Um, which we're doing with our partners over at Safe Project, and it's really just saying there's no shame in asking for help, just like Nadine said. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, when we ask for help, it's not a weakness; it is a strength. No, and it is not something that defines who we are. Mm -hmm. When we say that we maybe struggle with substance use disorder or we struggle with a mental health disorder, that is just a small piece of who we are as individuals. Yep. We are people first. And so we always want to make sure we're using people first language, mm -hmm. even as somebody that may have struggled with an addiction in the past, I no longer define myself as an addict. You know, right. I am a person in long-term recovery. Mm -hmm. I am a person first, somebody that has struggled, but I've also shown up, I've received support and I have an incredible community around me, mm -hmm. which is the last thing I just wanted to recommend uh, or a tip that I wanted to share is that it's so crucial. You are the sum of the five people that you surround yourself with yep. and so community really matters mm -hmm. community really does matter so it's okay to ask for help just like Nadine said it's okay to lean in to your community especially when you need that support and ultimately at the end of the day it's really important that we continue this conversation around mental health and substance use especially from a prevention standpoint we actively care about the young people that we serve and over the last 10 years we've been in front of almost 300,000 youth and I've watched young people say I don't feel like I'm heard I don't feel like I'm seen but I do know people that are impacted by addiction and mental health but nobody knows where to go for help and a lot of that is probably because people are afraid to ask for help so today we just want to make sure for anybody that's out there listening today and if you are struggling if you know somebody that's struggling please check out our website and check out our partners website to find some resources to help you today. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to drop all those links below. You can find mm -hmm. us at weallrisetogether.org, uh, safeproject.us, uh, and also be sure to like and subscribe right. to our brand new resilience series that we're kicking off. You know, be sure to stay tuned, hit the little bell so you get the notifications. Yeah. Um, but it's really important. We're going to be bringing more topics of conversation around this to you, not just mm -hmm. Anthony and I, but other young people. Mm -hmm. We're going to be getting youth involved in this conversation along with other community members, stakeholders, adults that are going to be dropping, like I said, some truths, yeah, <laughs> some knowledge gonna, bombs. They're going to be dropping some knowledge all throughout the summer uh, for the month of June to start. So please stay tuned. You can also go to weallrisetogether.org or you can go to our Instagram or Facebook page. Please check us out on there. We've been sharing some information over this last month that I think you find really helpful, especially if you're into raising awareness around mental health. So go check that out. Tons of tips and tools already on our website too. There's also a take action guide on the take action page if mm -hmm. you want to get started with us now. Awesome. Cool. Have a good week. All right. Thank you, guys. Did we just do that? <laughs> we did the same thing. Yep. <laughs>